question is that the motion be agreed to. Ah, uh, I'll call the Honourable Nathan Gray. Well, Madam Chair, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to take the uh, call uh, on the second reading. I was hoping that uh, the Minister of Agriculture and Biosecurity uh, would have responded to some of the questions and comments from this side of the House. Uh, it's obvious and very clear to us that we're going to have to wait until he's in the chair at the Committee of the Whole to answer uh, a lot of these questions. Let's just uh, recap on uh, some of those questions. One is we haven't had a sense from any of the contribution from the government benches this afternoon and in in, into the evening now as to why urgency needs to be taken on this bill. Uh, ten months uh, on since the government has been formed. And what was also glaring was when the minister spoke a few hours ago, he indicated to the House, indeed, there is another Nate bill being cooked up. So we've got a Nate bill in urgency this evening. But wait, it's a bit like the Ginsu knives, isn't it? But wait, there's more. And there's more coming down the pipeline. So why would the minister come into the House in urgency when we have another bill that's been cooked up by his officials? Surely it would make logical sense to combine those two bills send them off to a select committee so that everyone can have their say. And when I talk about everyone, I mean Federated Farmers, Dairy New Zealand, possibly Beef and Lamb, Fonterra, and farmers that have been on the end of this response and indeed may have had first-hand experience of these NAIT officers coming onto their property and using their uh, warrantless powers. So we haven't got a sense from the government benches this evening as why urgency is needed. We can't fathom, and not even from Mark Patterson, why this couldn't go to a select committee. You would have thought, you would have, beg your pardon? I did listen. I think you got confused. You were talking about a select committee for the search and surveillance Act, actually, Bill, there was an act in 2012 that New Zealand First, the Greens and Labor all voted against. Now they want to effectively get these two acts to align and Mr Patterson can't give us a clear reason why it couldn't go to a select committee. What we also haven't heard from the minister or anyone in the benches, in the government benches, is why is this not a recommendation of the NAIT review? 38 recommendations. We've heard from the Minister this evening that 15 of those are going to be dealt with by government. That's obviously on the second NAIT bill. And 23 of them are going to be dealt with by NAIT and Osprey. But when you look through the whole 38 recommendations, Two of these particular aspects of this NAIT bill that we are debating in urgency this evening aren't there. We haven't had any examples from the Minister as to why suddenly has this become an urgent issue when he's been in the chair for 10 months. These are the unanswered questions. He also stood up in the House and said that these provisions that he wants to insert into the warrantless powers go no further. Well, that is completely wrong. And it was interesting to hear from Eugenie Sage because they were really opposed to the Search and Surveillance Act of 2012, Bill, when it went, went through the parliament and became an act because of civil liberties and seen to encroach on people's personal lives and personal property. And I listened intently to Eugenie Sage this evening, Madam Chair. The critical point in her contribution was we are led to believe. 
that this is an anomaly that needs a drafting error. We are led to believe that this is a drafting error, and it's a technical, inconsequential tidy up that should have been done a long time ago. But the reality is, when we look at this bill, and when we sit down with the Minister's officials this week, we realise that it's more than just a technical bill, and indeed it is consequential. So we have some concerns on this side of the House, and we would have really have liked to have ironed these out in the select committee process. It's not too late, is it, for the Minister to stand up and say, I've spoken to my officials, We've had a bit of a huddle on the government benches and we realise that we should send this to a select committee. It's not too late. The primary production select committee, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask David Bennett, the chair, is the chair prepared to call the primary production select committee to meet in the recess? Order, order. Yes, yes. yes Mr Bennett said that he is. So here we have an offer from this side of the House for the Primary Production Select Committee to indeed meet in the recess. We believe we could turn this bill around in a truncated period over the recess and we'd be back into the House within two weeks to debate it. That offer so far has been turned down by the Minister. Why would the Minister want to effectively not give New Zealanders and farmers an opportunity to submit on this bill? You would think it's logical. They talk about being open and transparent. Why would the minister not send it to a truncated select committee process? So in conclusion, uh, Madam Chair, we are cautiously supporting this Nate Amendment Bill. There are aspects of it that we entirely agree with. And those two aspects are that when a farmer sends, uh, sorry, sells animals or moves animals to another farm, that farm must be NAIT registered. And then, of course, there is the compliance and infringement aspect of that if that transaction doesn't occur accurately and the way it should. But the search and surveillance extension of these warrantless powers has us on this side of the House really concerned. We would have preferred to have heard from the Minister at his second reading speech just a moment ago to stand up and answer these questions. But it's clear we are going to have to wait until the Minister gets in the chair. I have a personal view that the Minister is only just coming to terms of what part of this bill actually does. And it's going to mean that we are going to need to explore these very detailed and technical questions via the Minister to his officials either later this evening or more likely tomorrow morning. I conclude where I started off, Madam Chair. Uh, M. Bovis is a very important issue. The NAIT system needs to change. The Minister has had 10 months to bring this bill to the Parliament. He's decided to bring it through an urgency at the end of a four-week session when we go into a two-week recess. There's ample time for this bill to go to a select committee, even if that was truncated. There's ample time for people who are interested in this bill, and that would generally be farmers, but it could be stock agents. It could be truckies who are involved in the whole Nate supply system to have their voices heard. But the reason we have all of these unanswered questions is we have had just two sessions with the Minister's officials. For, as my uh, colleague, Right Honourable David Carter, mentioned, one for about 35 minutes and one for about 20 minutes. And they couldn't answer some of the specific details of this bill. It's an important bill. We want to get it right. We fundamentally think that parts of it are really important and it should go through. But there are some aspects around the Search and Surveillance Act of 2012 that we have some concerns about. 
call Kieran McEnulty. Madam Speaker, this is an important bill 